This is Your Health, a podcast of the Integrated Health and Social Services University Network for West Central Montreal. Hello, I'm Peter Anthony Holder. Welcome to this week's edition of Your Health. For new parents, there are so many things to learn when it comes to caring for a newborn infant. One of those concerns is how and what to feed your baby as it matures. Baby food purees is a healthy and nutritious way to introduce your child to eating. But if you've never done it before, how do you know what to do? Well, coming up in August, there will be a homemade baby food workshop taking place at the Park Extension CLSC. Joining us right now is Josiane Sear, a dietitian with the Child, Youth, and Family Program at the CLSC Park Extension. Josiane, first of all, tell us about the workshop. This workshop is for the parents of uh, young babies that will soon be uh, introducing their first foods. So it's the information the parents need to feel confident and to understand the the process. And it's also, um, I want to demonstrate to the parents that making the purees or the baby food at home is very simple and not expensive. So uh, that's that's well, quite the the beginning. Well, that brings up an interesting point too, because one of the things you know we live in a busy world these days, and some people mm-hmm. say that they haven't got time to prepare food for themselves. Never mind going through the process of pureeing and making baby food. So, how mm-hmm. do you convince them that this is something that would be easy to do and also very beneficial for their child? Well, um, you know, it's as simple as uh, cooking and blending. That's uh, not more complicated than that. Um, and it's also beneficial for the babies because the, the food that we prepare at home is more nutritious than the one that is processed by the, you know, the industrial uh, methods, uh, which, uh, so there's more vitamins, more minerals, and it's more tasty. Most babies also, they like it better. And one thing to remember is that uh, when you want to uh, make a transition from baby to adult food, it's much easier when you control the texture by yourself, like um, you can um, mash with the fork or just um, grossly uh, chop the food, so it's easier for the parents to do that um, transition. Now, when it comes to pureeing foods, which ones are easier to do? Well, of course, there's um, some food items that you don't need to cook before um, mashing, like uh, bananas or avocados or uh, ripe mangoes. They're quite uh, easy to prepare because uh, there's one step. You just, uh, you know, mash. (laughs) You peel and mash, actually, two steps, yeah. What foods should be avoided as far as babies are concerned? Well, for young babies, of course, uh, anything that is uh, round and hard, like round-shaped and hard, uh, is better to be avoided, like uh, hard candies or popcorn, uh, nuts and seeds, uh, raisins, um, because there's uh, always the risk of choking. Um, and same for like uh, grape or uh, sausages, they should be cut lengthwise and then cut in small pieces before being given to a baby because uh, there's a risk of choking for the child. When introducing things to a baby's diet, I'm sure you have to be concerned with the possibility of that child having an allergy to something. How, How do you prepare for that when you haven't introduced things to children before? How do you know when something is causing an allergic reaction before it becomes mm-hmm. a problematic? Hmm. Well, first, if the two parents uh, themselves have um, allergies, um, I think they should um, take the precaution of asking their doctor how to proceed because there's a medical method that, uh, uh, with um, medical supervision that, uh, makes, um, uh, that reduces the risk of allergy for the child. But if like, uh, only one parent or both parents don't have uh, allergies, then it's just to be aware of the signs or symptoms of allergies, uh, which can be like a skin rash or it can be um, diarrhea or constipation. It can be, um, you know, some, some signs can be like more severe, like uh, breathing problems or swelling around the face. Uh, and that type of allergy uh, is really um, emergency, um, you know, it's indicated to go to 
to the emergency. But for the other signs, um, if you know, and then if you introduce uh, every food item one by one and you observe the child and see if everything's fine um, for a few days, then you can be reassured and then you can just uh, maintain that food item and try a new one. So that's the method to identify if a child is uh, sensitive or uh, allergic to something. When you're doing purees and when you're introducing babies to new foods, I'm assuming you don't go to uh, food overload when it comes to various types of food. Should you introduce babies to uh, one food at a time over a period of time before introducing others or can you introduce a baby to more than one type of food at the same time? Um, it's uh, it's not that uh, strict anymore regarding the the amount of uh, like the the amount of food items. Of course, if you want to make sure that child has no uh, allergic reaction to something, it's more um, clear for you to introduce one food item at a time. But if by one occasion you introduce two or three things. Uh, it's okay if the child is fine with that, then uh, that can be done also. And, no problem. And what about actual quantity of food? When you're introducing a child to, uh, to new foods, how much mm-hmm. of it should you give at a time? Okay. If we talk about the first meals, like the first times baby is eating, it should not be uh, like a bowl of food. It's just a few spoonful, like baby spoons, two, three spoons. And um, it's important to observe the child while uh, the child is eating. Um, if he's um, still hungry, he will show, like he will open the mouth or he will show interest. But if the child has enough, then it's uh, always important to stop feeding, no matter uh, in what uh, period we are, like a early uh, food intake or after one year, like uh, the child should always be able to stop eating when, it's, uh, when the child is full. And what ye- how soon, rather, where should one start thinking about pureeing foods and introducing it to a baby's uh, diet? Uh, at what age, exactly? Okay. What is indicated by the World Health Organization is uh, near six months. It should not be um, much after six months because there's risk of uh, deficiencies, especially in iron. But uh, it should not be uh, before four months because uh, the child does not have the maturity or the digestive uh, enzyme to digest it well. Um, so somewhere between four and six months, but closer to six months, uh, to six months seems to be better. Now, history in my family uh, dictates uh-huh. that I was the pickiest baby in the world. <laughs> what happens if your child is, is picky and, and won't eat things? How do you get around uh-huh. making sure that your child develops properly the, the uh, mm-hmm. p- correct eating habits if they won't let you introduce something to them? Sure. Well, first of all, it's important not to force anything uh, in introducing new food for the baby. Um, if the baby is not accepting that new food item right away, um, it's just normal that sometimes the babies will spit out something new and uh, sometimes they don't like something. So it's just to offer maybe uh, a little bit later, one week, two weeks after, you can, you can try again that uh, food item. And um, it's, uh, it's proven that some children might take uh, like uh, near 10 trials before accepting a new food. So it's just important that parents uh, are not discouraged with that. They can try other things and then come back to that food item once in a while. And then uh, it's also possible to prepare it, uh, to combine it with some other foods that uh, the child likes or to like make a recipe or, um, you know, cooking it with uh, some other ingredients that make it more tasty. So there's many ways, but uh, certainly forcing is not the answer. It's going to make it worse. (laughs) So it's good to uh, allow the child to explore and sometimes allowing the child to explore the new food items with um, his hands 
um, it can do uh, little miracles because the child likes to touch the food because uh, they they feel they, they they feel the texture they can smell it they can see the color they can you know have um, a knowledge of the food before it gets into the mouth so sometimes the child will be more open to try things if it he has the chance to explore it. And again, for busy parents on the go, if they want to do this and they want to puree their own foods, uh, yeah. how how do they go about storing it? And how long can they store it for before they actually mm. feed it to the babies? Okay, so um, when the parents prepare the, the food for the babies, of course they have to, to, uh, to uh, have a certain amount of food to blend it because uh, it cannot be too small. So when you blend a certain amount of food, then you can put it in a small uh, uh, ice cube trays. Um, or it, there is also small uh, little boxes that have a lid on top, so you can fill it with the food and then just put directly in the freezer. So when the food is frozen, if it has any kind of meat, chicken, poultry, or uh, fish, um, you should not keep it in the freezer more than one or two months. Um, and when it's a uh, puree made only with vegetables or fruits or cereals, then it can be kept between six and eight months in the freezer. Um, for the um, when you unfreeze, if you put in the fridge, uh, like it, um, normally it's best to unfreeze like um, just one day before, uh, so it will uh, just melt and then become uh, easy to uh, just reheat a little bit. And these are the kind of things that you'll be teaching new parents when it comes to the free homemade baby puree workshops, correct? Yeah, yeah. We, we talk about this, and of course we answer all the parents' questions. There's uh, different things, and we also demonstrate the, the making of the purees. We do it uh, in the session. That's Josiane Sear, a dietitian with the Child, Youth, and Family Program at the CLSE Park Extension. The next series of free homemade baby puree workshops will take place in August at the CLSC and Park Extension. CLSC Park Extension is located at 7085 Hutchison Street. To get more information or to register for the workshops, you can call 514-273-3800, extension 6350. Once again, that number is 514 514- 273-3800, extension 6350. And that's it for this edition of Your Health. Again, we remind you, if you missed any of our previous programs, you can find them all archived on our website at podcast.cuswestcentral.ca. That's podcast.cuswestcentral.ca. You'll find there all the information such as links or phone numbers that we've mentioned in the show. Also, feel free to drop us a line if there is a topic or area of discussion that you'd like us to explore on future shows. I'm Peter Anthony Holden. Thanks for joining us. You've been listening to Your Health, a podcast of the Integrated Health and Social Services University Network for West Central Montreal. Join us next week for another edition of Your Health.